with one another and to give God praise for his many gifts. Today is the day that traditionally in our society and, and in the church we celebrate the feast of St. Valentine. It's a time uh, that we celebrate love, human love uh, shared with others. That we may worthily enter into this celebration, we pause to call to mind God's love and the many ways that he shows us that love to thank him for that gift and to ask forgiveness for the times that we have failed to be loving in our relationships with one another. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, When someone has on the skin of their body a swelling or an eruption or a spot, and it turns into a leprous disease on the skin of their body, that person shall be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of his sons the priests. Anyone who has the leprous disease shall tear, wear t torn clothes and let the hair of their head be disheveled, and shall cover their upper lip and cry out, Unclean, unclean. That person shall remain unclean as long as the disease persists, and being unclean, such a one shall live alone with their dwelling outside the camp. The word of the Lord.
The refrain for the psalm is, you are my refuge, Lord. With deliverance, you surround me. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Give no offense to Jews or to Greeks or to the church of God. Just as I try to please everyone in everything I do, not seeking my own advantage but that of many, so that they may be saved, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. A man with leprosy came to Jesus begging him, and kneeling said to Jesus, If you choose, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I do choose be made clean. Immediately the leprosy left him, and he was made clean. 
After sternly warning him, Jesus sent him away at once, saying to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded as a testimony to them. But the man went out and began to proclaim it freely and to spread the word, so that Jesus could no longer go into a town openly, but stayed out in the country, and people came to Jesus from every quarter. The Gospel of the Lord. Given what's happened in the last week in terms of the spread of the coronavirus in our province, uh, the reading, the first reading in the gospel passage today, uh, seem rather fitting. Uh, in a way, in our present pandemic situation, code the COVID virus is a is a type of leprosy. It, it uh, separates us from one another, makes us stay away from one another for fear of contagion. Uh, it's a time when uh, we, like that leper, really are called to turn to the Lord and ask for him to give us healing, uh, to uh, help us to deal with this uh, pandemic in a way that uh, allows us to, again, uh, be free from it and closer to one another. In Living Faith uh, this week, uh, the message speaks about what Jesus does in healing uh, the man who's the leper. And it says, the leper becomes our teacher here. He offers us an important insight into the heart of Jesus, pointing out that, he, that the healing uh, for Jesus is a choice. He chooses to reach out to heal. The healing that Jesus offers is not only physical, but also spiritual, psychological, and social. Jesus quite literally offers this person a new lease on life. It's an interesting insight into what Jesus does for this leper. And it's also an insight into that call that, or that need for healing that we have in our lives at times, whether it be COVID or other things, uh, where we look to God not only to heal us physically, but also psychologically and socially, to help us to, to belong and, and to feel his presence uh, and to be one with the people around us. This coming week, uh, on Wednesday, uh, we start uh, another season of Lent. And Lent is a time that we're particularly invited uh, to open ourselves to God and to his healing power, and also to open ourselves to be a healing instrument of God in our world. In uh, the Pope's message for Lent this year, the Pope uses the theme, Lent, a time for renewing faith, hope, and love. And he speaks about how fasting, prayer, and almsgiving, as preached by Jesus, enable and express our conversion. The path of poverty and self-denial, fasting, concern and loving care for the poor, almsgiving, and childlike dialogue with the Father, prayer, make it possible for us to live lives of sincere faith, living hope, and effective charity. Certainly every year in Lent we are called to make prayer, fasting, and almsgiving a part of our Lent. And I particularly like the way the Pope describes prayer as childlike dialogue with the Father. Childlike dialogue, coming to God with a humility that opens ourselves to him, both in terms of sharing our thoughts and feelings, but also in terms of opening ourselves to his love and his guidance. The Pope says, in these times of trouble when everything seems fragile and uncertain, it may appear challenging to speak of hope. Yet Lent is precisely the season of hope when we turn back to God who patiently continues to care for his creation. He says, to experience Lent with love means caring for those who suffer or feel abandoned and fearful because of the COVID-19 pandemic. When I was reflecting on this coming season of Lent, uh, particularly within the context of the pandemic, it struck me that maybe this Lent 
is a Lent like no other for us. Uh, in terms of what we're called to do in terms of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Um, you know, I, I know for myself, I, I usually have the, the same things that I seek to do every year during Lent in terms of increasing my time in prayer, uh, increasing my almsgiving, uh, seeking to fast from certain things in my life. But I wonder if this year, because of the pandemic, we aren't invited to look at what we're called to in this Lent um, in a different scope, in a different way, um, in a time when we're called to isolation. Are we maybe being called to give alms of our time in a special way in terms of um, thinking of those who are lonely and reaching out to them, uh, maybe not physically, but, but through telephone calls or, or, or through emails, uh, particularly people that we know that uh, in isolation don't have a lot of people to, to contact them. Is during this time of pandemic a, a time for us to particularly reflect on the fact that some people um, don't have places to self-isolate, uh, that uh, the homeless, uh, for those who are struggling with food insecurity, uh, this is a very challenging time. Is it a time for us in almsgiving to strive to reach out to them in a special way? In terms of fasting, <clears throat> is it from candy and things like that? Or are we called to fast in a different way uh, this uh, Lenten season? And in terms of prayer, uh, obviously at this point we're not uh, allowed to come to the church, but are we called to prayer in different ways? Um, I know Father Critch is, is having a Lenten mission here that's going to be live streamed. Uh, I've seen and we we're posting on our Archdiocesan website a, a number of different uh, types of uh, tools and, and uh, opportunities uh, for reflection and retreat during this Lenten season. So are we called in, in special and unique ways this year, given uh, the COVID situation, uh, to keep a Holy Lent? Uh, maybe as part of the prayer that we're called to pray is a, is a prayer for wisdom for our leaders, uh, for uh, knowledge uh, for our uh, professionals that are working with uh, finding a, uh, a, um, a vaccine for the uh, virus. Is it a time for us to pray, especially for our health care workers who are struggling with fatigue at this time? Uh, are our prayers called in, in unique and interesting ways during this time? In our second reading today, Paul, speaking to the Corinthians, invites the Corinthians to imitate him as he does Christ. And certainly Lent is a season for us to strive especially to imitate Christ. In the gospel passage today, we see Jesus is a compassionate person who chooses to bring healing. And you and I are called to do that each in our own particular way and within our own particular circumstances. As we continue in, ma on our, in our Mass today, uh, on this last Sunday before the beginning of Lent, uh, on a day that uh, as a society and as a church we especially uh, celebrate the love that is shown through the lives of the saints, particularly St. Valentine. Uh, it's a good time for you and I not only to celebrate God's love, but to open ourselves to that love and to be channels of that love in our dealings with one another. Through the words, words of the scriptures that we've heard today, uh, through the spiritual communion that will be the only style of communion for many of us today, we ask the Lord to nourish us and help us to bring us healing in our lives from whatever may be afflicting us and to help us to be instruments of his healing love for others today, throughout Lent, and always. God bless you.
Let us together profess our faith in a God of love and goodness using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Jesus has assured us that wherever two or more are gathered in his name, he is present in their midst. Confident of God's presence here with us, we offer to him now our prayers of petition. For Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Archbishop, that they may have the courage and strength of the Holy Spirit to lead and guide our church through difficult times, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our church, that as sisters and brothers, we may reach out to all who have been excluded or marginalized by our society and offer welcome and inclusion in our communities, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's blessings upon our efforts to bring healing to all those in our archdiocese who have been wounded by abuse, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering financially, physically, mentally, or spiritually during this time of coronavirus pandemic, that we, like Jesus, may offer outstretched hands and prayer for their health and well-being. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our public health authorities, our government officials, our medical care workers, and frontline workers, that they may be protected and strengthened during this pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick and dying, that they may receive comfort, comfort and compassion from family members and all who provide compassionate care each day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, that they may rest in the peace of the risen Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause for a moment to bow our heads and offer our own personal intentions. For all of these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers that we offer you this morning, both those we have spoken aloud and those that are in our hearts, for they are offered through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord. For by your word you created the world, and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son, you gather men and women whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the angels, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, 
whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, in whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, with all the other bishops, with priests and deacons, and with all your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the Gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Martyrs, with Cosmos and Damien, with St. Valentine, and with all the saints, we praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. baptism we are God's children and so with confidence we can pray to our Heavenly Father as Jesus our brother taught us our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation but deliver us from evil Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other sign of the Lord's peace. Mercy. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion, a prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our communion hymn is 6.6 .6 in the Celebrate and Song, One Love Released. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to join with me in praying the prayer of Pope Francis to Mary for help and protection during the coronavirus pandemic. O Mary, you always shine in our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain 
keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide so that, as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Before the final blessing, I uh, should note that today is the feast of St. Cyril and Methodius, who are patron saints of the Slavic people. Uh, I meant to include them in the uh, Eucharistic prayer today, and I got mixed up and prayed for Co uh, to Cosmos and Damien instead. So this is the feast of Cyril and Methodius, uh, two great saints uh, from uh, the early church. And uh, for any people who specifically uh, have a devotion to them, I apologize that I forgot to mention them earlier in the Mass. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with kindness and give you his peace. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Our missioning hymn is number 535 in the Catholic Book of Worship, Now Thank We All Our God. Thank you. 